Okay, so today we are going to look at rewriting equations and formulas, meaning we're not actually going to solve them for an actual number, but we're going to rewrite them so we can solve for a different variable. So for example, we saw this in the diagnostic when you're solving for y, which is what our first example is. Um, and these are what we call literal equations. Um, and they're usually what we use to create formulas, and um, it's just a way to rewrite an existing equation that may be a little easier for us to use in some context. So for example, A, I want to solve for Y, meaning I want to get Y by itself. Um, and it's okay to leave X in the answer, right? I just want to get Y by itself, and that is my own goal, my only goal. So let's go ahead and just do our inverse operation. So I want to get Y by itself, meaning I have to get rid of the 4X and the negative 7. Same deal, um, resolve addition and subtraction first. So I'm going to make that zero pair and get negative 7. Y is equal to negative 4x plus 12. You can also write 12 minus 4x, it's the same thing. And then finally, let's go ahead and get 1y, because I want to solve for 1y. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 7. So I'm going to divide every single piece by negative 7. And that's a negative sign in case that's not clear. Oh, just make that a little clear. So negative 7 here. So I'm going to divide every single piece by it. And I like doing it this way because then if you can reduce a fraction, you can reduce the fraction. If you just write everything over negative 7, it may not actually be completely simplified. So my final answer is y equals negative divided by negative is a positive, positive 4 over 7x minus 12 over 7. And again, it's okay to have another variable in my answer as long as I've just done my objective, which is get y by itself, right? And I can do that for anything. So if you take a look at B, I want to get W by itself. And here you might think, oh, well, there's two W's here. What can I do? Remember, um, what happened here was you ba there was basically a distribution. So we can take out that W first and create a parentheses 3 plus 4P. And we'll actually be looking at that. This is called factoring. Um, more in detail in the second trimester. But that's what we can do right now. And see, that was basically the undoing the distributive property. Now, what I, why would I want to do that? Well, because again, I want w by itself. Um, and I can't really get w by itself if there's two w's, and I can't combine those like terms. So now what we can do is simply divide and then I'm going to get this entire parentheses cancels out, right? Because I've divided by the entire group, so that means I've got w by itself, and that's going to equal a over 3 plus 4p. Okay? So note down here, um, we must make sure that the value of the variable or variable expression um, that we divide by must not be 0. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we um, identify what might make it 0. Because remember, if we have a 0 in the denominator, it's undefined because we can't define by 0, or we can't divide by 0. So you can just do a quick check here. We can say 3 plus 4p cannot equal 0. So what makes it 0? So do this quick equation. So 4p equals negative 3. So p is equal to 3 fourths. Um, to make that whole thing equal 0, and we don't want that, so we want to say p um, when p is not equal to negative 3 fourths, this equation works. Okay, if you have questions on that, please let me know, um, and we can go over that again in class. But go ahead and try the you try problem. So notice 1, 2, and 3 solve for y. 4, 5, and 6, solve for x. Being very careful about, you know, when you can pull out the um, distribution, right, taking it out in parentheses, and then for these, you'll want to note, we want to identify um, that number that would make the denominator 0. So make sure you think about what makes the denominator 0 here. Okay, and we'll check that with the Ed Puzzle video like we've done before, and then we will look at the next section.
Okay, so we can also rewrite formulas that we're very familiar with, things like area of a triangle or area of a rectangle, because um, sometimes you might have like 20 problems asking what's the height of the triangle. And rather than sitting there and solve and um, do your regular formula, every single time and get h by itself, it might be easier to just get h by itself first and then plug in the numbers. And that's where using um, these literal equations and solving for what we're looking for can kind of be useful. Okay, so let's just look at one example here. The formula for surface area, remember surface area is um, all the areas around a shape of a rectangular prism, which is one of these, right? It's like a box. So the surface area is all of the rectangles added together, the areas of the rectangles added together. Um, and that is S equals 2LW plus 2LH plus 2WH. We want to solve for the length L, all right? So I want to get L by itself. So then you want to see I see one, two different Ls, um, but they're not like terms. So we want to think about that second example we did above and take out that, w, that L first by pulling it out of a parentheses. So this is going to be, um, L, and then I have 2W plus 2H, and then outside of the parentheses, plus 2WH, okay? And then remember, I want to get L by itself, so let's go ahead and get rid of any addition or subtraction first, just like always. So I'm going to get S minus 2WH equals L times 2W plus 2H, that's still in parentheses, and then finally, to get L completely by itself, we're going to divide by 2W plus 2H. And my final answer, my equation is going to be um, S minus 2WH over 2W plus 2H equals L. Okay. I know, again, we said we want to um, think about the denominator and make it not equal zero, but we got two different variables there, so um, it's kind of more difficult to figure out that, um, that number that W and H can't be, so we'll just table that and just worry about, you know, solving for L there. Okay, go ahead and try 7 and 8, and then we'll come back. Check that, and then in um, class, we'll move on and look at these word problems and how to use our formulas, okay? Again, please come back to class with questions, especially for small things like if you couldn't read my handwriting. Um, but we'll be using these little formulas, and I think they're really important, especially when you think about, again, if you need to find 17 different heights, let's solve for height first rather than plug it all in, okay? Um, again, questions in class, please.